start. For today, we have another example on the shell balance. And the example is a pack bed reactor. Do you know pack bed? Yes? From kinetics, you should know pack bed already. In, in this example, we are going to convert a species A into species B using reaction. However, the reaction takes place um, only in the presence of catalyst. That means the reaction takes place at the surface of catalyst. Without catalyst, there will be no reaction. Okay? Both A and B are gas. They're both gases. So in, in practical or in, in commercial use, we are going to choose to use either fluidized bed or packed bed. But for this, um, let's say this is a fluidized bed, for, for example. You are going to have catalyst, which is uh, spherical particles in the bed. And then you put gas underneath the vessel so that the particle itself can be fluidized. Okay? If you consider one single particle, it should look like this picture. You have particles of the catalyst suspended and surrounded by fluid. So the fluid, coming fluid, supposed to be POA. Um, fluid flow, the fluid itself cannot go through the catalyst, it must go around it, okay? And there'll be, if you look at this picture, normally when, when we consider momentum um, balance or when you consider uh, velocity profile, you should see that the velocity of the incoming gas should have one value, maybe V infinite. And velocity here will be uniform. Once it reaches the catalyst particles, then velocity at this particular point becomes zero. Because at the interface between solid and fluid, the velocity of solid or velocity of fluid is supposed to be equal to velocity of fluid. If you take the coordinate together with the particle itself, as if the particle is stationary, and then there will be a fluid flowing toward the particles. The velocity component at this particular point becomes zero. Okay? So if you look at other point next to this interface, the velocity would become non-zero, and it becomes faster and faster, and eventually, at the distance further from the surface of catalyst, the velocity here should be approaching velocity v infinite. Okay? So if you write down velocity profile, it should look something like this. This will be a velocity profile of the fluid around the particles. Okay? Same thing regarding concentration. If you consider that incoming fluid is POA, all right, then A supposed to go into the particles, into the surface of the particles. Why? Because on the surface of particles, there'll be a reaction, just like this picture. There'll be a reaction here on the surface, so therefore, concentration of A on the surface would reach zero because A is consumed right at the surface. So therefore, concentration of A here and there should be different, right? And A is supposed to have higher concentration up here. Higher concentration drive A toward the surface. There will be a difference in concentration. That difference would be concentration gradient which is a driving force for diffusion. So there will be diffusion from A out here toward the surface. 
So along the way, concentration of A is supposed to be changed with respect to position as well as what we found for velocity. Concentration of A around here supposed to be almost similar to concentration of A in the incoming fluid and then concentration of A near the surface supposed to be small. Okay? So, therefore, there will be a mass flux of A going toward the particles. So, in this case, just like what we derived for a Newton law of cooling, we are to divide the whole system into two parts. By the way, the system would be in this case the fluid. The fluid would be a system. Okay? Now, in the fluid, we are going to, to divide them into two parts. The first part is in here, highlight in red here. Within this, this layer, there will be a change in concentration of A with respect to position. Outside this layer, there will be no change in concentration. Okay? So, out here, we call this one bulk gas. In here, we call it film resistance. Just like what we did for Newton law of cooling. Remember, for Newton law of cooling, we also divide the system into two parts. The one with constant temperature is called bulk. The one with temperature change with respect to position is called film resistance. It's the same thing, same principle. Okay? So, it means that if you look into one particle only and then you divide them into two regions, there will be diffusion of A from bulk through this film <coughs> resistance and to reach the surface of the catalyst. Normally, the thickness of this film resistance is very, very small may be approaching micrometers. Okay? And such small thickness comparing to the diameter of the particles makes you able to assume that the spherical coordinate is no matter. You can assume the particles to be flat. So this becomes the surface of catalyst and then you have layer of film. As long as the thickness of this film here is much smaller than the di diameter of the catalyst itself, you can ignore curvature and turn the spherical problems into rectangular problems. All right? So here will be our film resistance. <coughs> Suppose the thickness here is delta. Out here is bulk. All right? So you have A diffused from bulk which has high concentration down to the surface of catalyst which has low concentration. Now in this direction, if I say this direction is Z, remember normally we take direction to be, at least we, we will take direction to be along with our diffusion flux. And we know right now that flux of A moves downward, so direction downward can be taken to be a Z direction. So at this position here is Z equal to zero, this position would be Z equal to delta. Okay? By the way, the thickness of the film here, delta, depends on several features or several factors. The most important factors would be velocity of the fluid itself. If the velocity is high, then the thickness of this film resistance becomes very thin. Because high velocity makes the concentration out here uniform. Right? So the thickness of film resistance inversely proportion to incoming velocity. And by the name itself, it's, it's called resistance. If you want the flux of A to move toward the catalyst um, in high flux, then the thickness of film resistance is supposed to be thin. In other words, 
if you want to enhance diffusion, the first thing that you like to do would be increase the flow rate. Okay. Now, if we want to know the flux of A going into the catalyst, we should define the concentration profile of A within this thickness layer and then from that derive the from the concentration profile, if you take differentiation of concentration profile, you can get the flux. All right. So, our first task would be finding the concentration profile within this film resistance. So, what should our shell look like? It should be something like this. As long as you can assume concentration of A to be uniform along this direction. Okay. So, flux of A going in and flux of A going out let us call this one N A Z. So, from shear balance in minus out plus generation equal to 0, 0 at steady state. Input in this case would be flux at Z multiplied by cross section area or the surface area of the catalyst itself. If it is called S, okay, output would be NAZ taken at Z plus delta Z times S as well. As long as we neglect the curvature, S here and S there becomes the same. Okay. Is there any generation? Is this term zero? No. Why? Because there is a reaction. Right? Are you agree? This term indeed is zero. Why? When you want to determine whether or not generation term is zero, you need to be very careful and look where we take the balance. Right now, we are taking a balance around the shell. Is there any reaction within the shell? No, because right now reaction takes place on the surface only. Okay? So, there is no reaction within the shell. Therefore, generation term becomes zero. In the simple word, whenever you have heterogeneous reaction, this is heterogeneous reaction, the term generation becomes zero. But whenever you have homogeneous reaction, then you have to take account of generation term. Okay? For heterogeneous reaction, reaction would appear in the boundary condition, not in the balance. All right. So, if you divide the whole equation by S delta Z and take delta Z to be approaching 0, you get differentiation of NAZ by DZ equal to 0 or NAZ is a constant. All right, that's the first job, taking a balance. The next task would be changing or converting the flux itself into the concentration. Oh, by the way, remember, in this part I use molar basis. The reason I use molar basis because in our system there is a reaction, and reaction would be represented by stoichiometry ratio. It is easier to use molar basis. 